Hey, what's going on, everybody? Woodrow Adams Jr. here again. It's like 4.30 in the morning. I can't sleep. I've been tossing and turning. Um, like, I have mixed emotions, different things going on in my brain. Like, my side of the bed has been wet, like, soaked, drenched, like I've been sweating. Um, I had to get up and put this video out while I'm in the moment, while I'm feeling it, because as we all know what's going on with George Floyd in Minneapolis where he lost his life due to an officer who applied pressure to his neck for over six minutes that I've seen. And it was probably longer than that, but and ultimately killed this man for what? It's not justified. I don't care what anybody says. This guy was down in custody with handcuffs behind his back for over six minutes that I've seen. The totality triangle that I've been sworn in by, by the Massachusetts trial court says that you, as an officer, you meet the, res the actions of the subject, right? So if this man is no threat of bodily harm and in death to anybody, you should not be up here. Whether he was resisting, you meet him here. This guy took it to a whole other level. He needs to see his day in court. He needs to be held accountable. And the officers that stood around him, I failed him for them too because they should have said something, right? <clears throat> you could have tapped your brother out. You could have tapped him out. Um, I work at the Worcester Courthouse. I've been down there for several years. And I can honestly say that the issues that we have down there, I don't know what they were before I got there. But as a whole, since I've been there, I've seen different minorities come into the courthouse because we all know a lot of the minority, like people that, court users that come into the courthouse are minorities, whether they're in the lockup or they're through the front door. They're coming in and if they can see another minority as a court officer, they feel a little more comfortable. And the fact that like, I've been down there in different minorities, like the Massachusetts trial court been getting minorities in there. Like we have seen change over the past few years and I stand by that. I stand by that. Um, it hurts because I, I, I can't, I can't get over like how much I watched the video and, and, and to see this man plead for his life. Humanity, like where is humanity? Like where are we, like we need some more work to be done. The, the Charleston massacre. My man went in there in the church and murdered many people and walked out alive. Like, where was that same energy that you, 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 the Minneapolis cop that applied the pressure to this unarmed man? Like, we. But one thing I've learned is I'm not. Like, we all, we're all human. Like, we, we all go through different emotions. Like, we all. You want to see revenge, right? You want to go back and get back. You want that same energy. You want to see that same result, right? I pray. I pray more than ever. Because there was a time in my life where, you know, people from different sides of the city, whether it was South Side or wherever, a different side of the city would get killed, right? And I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't care. I was like, on myself, I was like whatever <laughs> I didn't I didn't like that side of the city anyway but as a human as you grow older you go through a continuum of experiences and you go through life and you learn values and, and you, you 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 fail for people that lose their lives especially when it's not warranted you can't get a life back right so I feel like I'm solidified and I'm I'm, I'm I'm able to speak on situations like this because of what I do, the work that I put in. I go, through, I have different events where in the summertime I give away over a thousand backpacks and free haircuts and free food and school supplies to the kids to try to educate them and get them off on the right steps. Right? And I hold a Stop the Violence event at the Boys and Girls Club every year at the end of school year to get these kids off on the right foot. Like, I do this and I bring guest speakers to talk to them because I don't want to see these kids dying all the time, right? And Christmas toy drives and when I give out free gifts and <laughs> like, I, so I, I do this. Like, I go to the high schools and I speak to the kids in my uniform. 
And this is not about me like bragging about anything that I'm doing, but it's just to show you exactly what I'm doing in hopes to make changes in this world. Like, I've been on a job as a Massachusetts trial court officer for over three years now, right? And I'm, I'm good, like my family's good. I, I made a good amount of money. It's not guaranteed with the whole coronavirus that I have a job tomorrow, but I'm thankful, right? So I, I have this job and I'm not content. It's not enough. Like the trial court is blessed with having me on as a staff. That's the way I feel, right? So with me being on a job, I'm, I'm taking it to another level. There was opportunity to be a race and implicit bias trainer for different court offices in the state of Massachusetts. So the trial court sees a need for race and implicit bias training. I stepped up to take the chance. I stepped up to do the job. I didn't have to. If I pass away right now, my kids would be off to a good start. I could stop. I don't have to run the basketball league at St. Peter's Church. I don't have to do the things I'm doing, but I really genuinely care. So when I hear people on Facebook and social media talking about all officers are the same, no. And the black officers are even worse, no. That's not the case. Because when I leave work, I put on my Tims. I put on my polo shorts. I put on my polo shirt. My jewelry. Yeah, I do that. Like, I, I, this, I'm still me at the end of the day. I'm still human and I care for people. So I take offense to that. And this is not to take away from George Floyd, the real situation right now in Minneapolis, like these officers need to be held accountable. But I just want people out here to just stay woke. You talk about stay woke all the time. Like, it's not, it's more than just saying stay woke. You have to actually show stay woke. Like you have to, you have to live it. You have to believe it. You have to go out and reach out to you. Like I'm working with city council right now. I'm working with different administration in the, in the, in the school system, the public school system, Worcester, my city. I got a tattoo on my chest, 508, like forever young. Like I'm working with them to reach out middle school to get them, prepare them, and be ready for high school and then after that, college. Because most of our minorities are not thinking about college, right? So I'm stepping up to the plate and I'm, I'm investing my time. Time. What are you doing with your time, right? And I'm going off sidetrack because I'm, 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 I'm getting focused on the negative, but I don't want to focus on I need to focus on the positive. I need to focus on how we're going to make things right. People, the only way we're going to make change is not by riot. We're not going to, and, and we're not going to get it by riot. You have to encourage our youth to be in these positions, law enforcement, court system, judicial system, like judges, attorneys, that's the only way we're going to make change. And if you're not doing that, you're being ignorant. You're being ignorant to, you're oblivious to what's really going on. You're not staying woke. Because obviously, protesting and doing these different things is not working, clearly. And I refuse to make these kids fall victim and, and, and feeling bad for themselves and, and always going at the police, the police, the police, police. Like, dude, get in the situation, get involved, get involved, get active, get active, get in these positions to make changes. I need to sleep. I need to, sleep. I need to go to sleep. I, I just pray. I just pray. I pray. I pray for the good. I pray for those officers. A lot of y'all probably don't want to hear that. Roughly your fellow. I, I pray for those officers. I pray for Eric uh, George for his family, Eric Gardner and his family, like in, in New NY, who lost his life and he wasn't even. I pray. I pray for the good and the bad. I just don't want to be categorized as these officers just because I put a badge on every day and I go to work. I'm trying to make changes. I have mixed emotions right now. I'm hurt. I, I feel disgusted when I see my old people talking about all officers are the same. Like, I'm, I'm just like you. 
I come from the same block as you. Rest in peace, George Floyd, all those who lost their life and, and, and police brutality, I'm not the same. We gotta make change in America. It, it's not gonna stop with one person or two people. Like, this is everybody, 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 everybody.